Hello, everybody. This is Steve Rybrook over at Ledgeview Partners. And this short webinar is just to show you some of the cool and exciting stuff that's coming up in our August release. Let's get right into the list of what we've done. So this is all going to kick in on August 14th. When you come into work on that Monday, you're going to see these changes. So big note to yourself. Don't be ending the webinar and going to looking for all this stuff because it's not there yet. But it'll be there in a few weeks. So what I typically do here is I'll just go through verbally and just kind of describe the changes kind of real quick um, in PowerPoint here so you get a sense for it. And then we'll spend most of our time when I flip over to CRM and demonstrate it. So on uh, leads and opportunities, some big changes to the way we handle competitors. As most of you know, over on the kind of the right hand side on the screen, you can enter as many competitors as you want, which is great. It allows for lots of flexibility. Um, unlimited, obviously. However, it makes it difficult to do analysis on competitors because it's not an attribute or a field right on the leader opportunity record. So with some feedback from our customers, we've changed that. Where now we're just going to let you enter competitor one, competitor two, competitor three, and those are just separate fields right on those records. So lots of easy analysis on views and advanced finds and all kinds of good stuff. So I'll show you that. Quotes. I know not everybody uses our quote feature, but uh, a lot of our customers do. So it looks like a long list here, but it won't take me too long to cover. But one of the issues that we've had uh, that folks have asked about is, is the sequence that the products print on a quote. It's the order that you enter them. Well, now we've given you a way to sequence them yourselves. So they're going to be in the order you want them to print in. Another issue that's come up with quotes is, as most of you know, you need an opportunity to generate a quote. Well, we've changed that now, where you can also generate a quote directly from an account. So you do not need an opportunity. So uh, warning to managers, and I guess everybody, we don't want to lose sight of the importance of our, our pipeline and our opportunities. So we still want to keep that going. But if you got to uh, get out a, a quote to somebody and there really is no opportunity, then obviously that's when you would, you would do it the new way. For those of you using the scope of work feature on quotes, you'll, you probably know that it was limited to just one. And we're going to let you put in as many as you want. And I'll demonstrate that. A lot of folks really aren't using that. But when I demonstrate it, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then printing. Most of you know you've got to print quotes from behind the, I think it's called an ellipsis, the three dots. But there still was an option in the ribbon to print the quote, which worked for maybe 10% of our clients because it's really not supported through a lot of the browsers anymore. So we just took that button away. So hopefully that'll clear up some issues there. All right, what else? On the account screen, most of you are probably familiar with that little section that shows the rolling 12-month product summary. Well, we've added the last purchase date or last order date to that little grid on that screen. So not only will you see all the products the customer's buying and which one he's buying the most of down to the which one he's buying the least of, you'll see the last time they ordered that product. On the contact screen, we added some, some of Microsoft's out of the box marketing uh, questions. <laughs> I guess that's the best way I can describe that. So there's just some fields that are in the out of the box dynamic CRM where you can code a contact to, let's say, not allow them to get emails or allow them to get emails. So I'll go through that and show you all those questions. Uh, I think a lot of you won't touch that, but some of you may take advantage of that. And then probably the one I'm most excited about, but actually requires a little bit of work from your IT team or your outsource, uh, your software vendor on the accounting side is, as most of you know, we integrate your accounts, order history, and products from your back office right into CRM. Well, we now have CRM set up to accept two more files, which we've had a lot of requests for this, where CRM will now be able to show you the prices that a customer currently is set up at in your accounting system. And it will also be able to show you your inventory balances, so how much you have on hand of each of your products. So what we're trying to do here is for those folks who were you know, having to 
get either make a phone call or flip over to their accounting system to get these answers. If we can get them right in one tool, that tool called CRM, hopefully everybody will be a lot more efficient. And I don't want to get too technical on this discussion, but when I do get to this part at the very end, I'll just pull up document 900, which really is going to be used by your, your IT team, because that just has the rules on what these files need to look like when you build them and send them to us. And it's just like all the other files, you just build them, send them to us every night. They go up to like an FTP site and we grab them and process them and put them in CRM. All right, enough talking. Let's... Uh, flip over to CRM and see some of this stuff in action. So the first thing we talked about was really leads and opportunities and that competitor change. So let's flip over to leads. And I did actually prepare for this a little bit and I created a lead uh, earlier today. So not much of a change here. So here's the lead screen. I'm not gonna go through the whole screen, obviously just over here on the right. This looks a little bit different. Now it's just three competitor spots. They're just lookups, so I could hit the lookup search for a competitor and save it, and, and then it would be added to this lead. Pretty simple stuff. The other thing that you'll find then is because that's now there, this is kind of the, the nice part about it. So this really isn't that much different, but what's kind of nice is if I jump back to my list of leads, I can actually have those values right on the view. So I've got competitor one, competitor two, and competitor three right in the view. And we changed, all, I would say, all of the, all of the mostly used views, like here's um, you know, all leads. That's just another view that you, you all have. And so we've added competitor one, two, and three to that view as well. So a lot of the views were changed to show that. Obviously, if you did your own view, you did an advanced find and created your own, you now have very simple access to your competitors. All right, so let's take a look at opportunities. Kind of the same concept, but just a little bit more on the opportunity side. So let's pull up, uh, let's pull up this guy right here. So here's an opportunity, and you'll see over on the right, nothing different here except looks just like the lead screen, right? Competitor one, two, and three. Well, as um, most of you know the opportunity screen is is somewhat configurable you can reach out to us and we can do this for you um and it doesn't really change you're not like a one-off or anything we've got the system where you can configure this screen to require different fields so one of the requests that we received in the past was i want to make the competitor field required and we were unable to do that with the old way it was set up. Well, with the new way, we're able to go into the uh, configuration setting and, and make competitor one required. And that, that won't make it required for all of our customers, just, just your CRM. So you can ask for that and we'd be, we just have to email or call our help desk and we'd be glad to make competitor, I would think you'd probably wanna just make competitor one required if you were gonna do it. So anyway, we've got a little bit more flexibility now that we're, we're doing this way. And we've actually taken this one a step further. So hopefully you're excited about this. You can control with, you know, by telling us really when you want the competitor required. And the when is really what sales stage. So actually I have this set up to make competitor required when it reaches sales stage three. But if I go back a stage and I go back to sales stage two, Hopefully it doesn't take too long to just go back a stage. So you saw how I did that. I just went back one stage. It's now back in sales stage two. You see the little flag right here. And guess what? No red asterisk by competitor one. So I could wipe out this competitor and save this opportunity. It'd be totally fine. It won't yell at me. But once I get to sales stage three, I'm going to jump back to three. Then the little red asterisk shows up and now, now that's required. So Kind of excited about that. Hopefully that helps keep your opportunities cleaner if competitor is a real important feature for you all. All right. Um, I'll show you the views in a minute, but um, as most of you know, when you close an opportunity as lost, we ask you for a competitor. Um, we never did that when you close an opportunity as one, because the thought was, well, why, why would you want to code a competitor if you won the opportunity, right? You won it. 
So it's not like who you lost it to. But hey, um, I got some feedback from some customers that that is an important question to ask because it would be nice to keep track of the competitors that we're taking business from. And if I do that often enough, right, if I keep track of that, then if I analyze my one opportunities over time, maybe I'm winning a lot of opportunities from a given competitor, and maybe we find out we just have an advantage over them for a lot of potential customers. And maybe that's where we wanna focus our efforts, right? On the competitor that it's easy for us to take business from. So I'm not gonna bother advancing this all the way to the end and closing this as a, as a win, but when you go to close an opportunity as a win, it's gonna ask one more question. It's gonna ask you optionally, you don't have to enter it if you don't want to, but who was the competitor um, associated with this win? So pretty exciting um, information there. Hopefully that helps you out. And then lastly, again, we talked about views. Because we have all this information, I could go, let's say, to all my closed opportunities. And we changed almost all of the critical views here. But now I'm looking at all my, my this happens to be closed opportunities. And here are those columns I was talking about. These are all new. Competitor one, competitor two, competitor three, and and who what, who was the closed competitor? Whether it was the one I, I lost an opportunity to or whether I won the opportunity, um, this is where that, that competitor goes. And you would know if it was a win or a loss based on the, the status of the opportunity. And there's also views that look at wins or losses. So lots of different ways to analyze the data. All right. so. A lot of neat stuff with leads and opportunities. I'm switching now over to quotes. So let's jump to quotes. Typically, I would probably find an account, find an opportunity, and, and then pull up the associated quote. But just to save me a couple clicks, I just want to pull up a quote just to give you an idea. So I'm just grabbing any old quote here. And the feature, a couple of features I want to point out here are having to do with the quote product section. As you know, you can add products one at a time. So you can add a lot of products, but just one at a time, or you can go up here and add multiple quote products. Both options now are going to ask you for a sequence number. And I went in and I played, and you can see on this product, I didn't give it a sequence number, and these, I actually gave it a sequence number. And I kind of broke my own rule, because I'm preaching here, you should probably set up your sequence numbers about 10 apart in case you want to slide one in between a couple. So. The only thing you're gonna see different is when you hit the plus sign here to add a product. And while it's loading, I'll let you know that if you don't care about the sequence, if it's a short quote, or you just don't care, you're happy with the way it works today, don't bother about this, just don't worry. But there's just this spot for sequence number. So as you're adding products, if you are interested, I would probably just make sequence 10, 20, 30, 40, and just number them as you're going. And then if you have to slide one in, it's pretty easy to add another product and, and make it sequence 15. And again, the same thing happens up here if I use the add multiple quote products button. For those of you who like this feature, this is a way for you to um, do a search of some kind and then pick the products that you want added to the quote and you hit the little add button and it pulls whatever you selected there down here. You can update the price and guess what? Update the sequence number, hit okay. And now these three products would have been added to my quote. So again, the whole purpose isn't so much so it displays in this order, which it does, but the nice part is this is gonna be the order then that it's gonna print in. So if, you know, it probably makes sense to kind of organize your quotes so it makes sense to the customer. All right, so there's um, the quote sequence deal or the product sequence deal. The other thing we talked about was the scope of work. And I know not everybody uses this feature, but for those of you who do, it's, uh, it's kind of nice, you can set up these, these paragraphs of text so you don't have to type them all the time on your proposal. So here I've got this quote, and let's say I wanna have a nice little greeting on the quote. So I set up a, a scope of work called greeting. So I just pick that, and boom, it, it fills this in with all this text. So I didn't, I didn't have to type that on my quote, just there, you know, real quick to do it. So to set up scope of works is kind of nice, set them up once and I can use them all the time. And in the past, if I would go pick another scope of work, it would wipe this one out, wipe out this text. Well, now I can just maybe, maybe I'd make sense to jump to a new line, 
go up here and say, hey, I also want to put our delivery schedule on there, which is another scope of work. I just, it's just text. So I pick that one and boom, it shows up down here. We deliver to Appleton, blah, 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 blah. So I can just keep selecting scope of work and it'll just keep adding text to the bottom of this and away you go. So kind of a nice feature. And when we only allowed for one, it was, you know, we had some customers who used it so much, they said, oh, we've got like three of them that I want. And, uh, you know, it just didn't work for them. So to allow it to just add it to the bottom was, wasn't that difficult. So we put that in this release. All right. And then the, the last thing I pointed out is the, the print quote button is gone from here. And those of you know, this is really how you're supposed to print a quote. You go to the ellipsis, go to run report, and go to quote print. Okay, we're cruising along. Um, lots of cool stuff. Um, accounts, what did we change on accounts? So let's jump over to accounts. And I'll just, I don't need to say that. And I think I was playing with one of these earlier. Here's a real, uh, here's a real creative uh, account name, right? Rybrook Company. So I just have a little test account out here called Rybrook, Com Rybrook Company. And one of the things I wanted to show you is this uh, rolling 12 month summary that most of you are aware of. It shows the products the customer was buying over the last 12 months, summarized by product, showing you how much he bought, you know, over that time period and showing me the highest down to my lowest. Well, you see over here on the right, we also show you the last order date. So it's just looking at order history, saying when was the last time they purchased this product and this product and then this product. So hopefully that helps you out sometimes when you're analyzing your accounts. And then the other thing I want to show you while I'm on the account screen is it's kind of related to accounts, but it's more related to quotes, which we talked about earlier. So if I'm on the account screen, if you if I scroll down, there's a new section that never used to be on here. It's over here on the right and it's for quotes. This is what you would typically see on the right hand side of an opportunity, but we also added it to the account screen and I'm not going to get into quotes because we were just there, but here's the magic button, right? So I'm on an account, I hit the plus sign and I can create a quote from I can create a quote from an account. I don't need an opportunity. So that's that. Hopefully that helps some of you out. Okay, switching gears over to contacts. I'm just gonna open up any old contact because it doesn't matter. I've never used these fields that we've added. These are all out of the box. So it's exactly the way Microsoft has these configured. So we're consistent with, with non oil and gas, you know, CRMs. So you're very familiar with this contact screen. This is this is the one we created. As I scroll down, we added this section called marketing preferences. And these are just different flags for you to either, what is this like, allow emails or do not allow emails. So by default, you're gonna be able to, you know, communicate with a customer any way you want, but you can set these switches any way you want. So as you, if you start doing marketing stuff or, you, you want to make a, a different view over contacts and you need some flag you want to use. Maybe you would want to tap into one of these. Just be careful that, you know, they are used by the marketing module. So if you use that, you can't just willy nilly be using these flags for whatever you want. So like this do not allow emails. If you say doesn't allow, but you have this person on an email campaign, they're, they're not going to get the email, which is what you've kind of told the system. So it's really designed for marketing, but you, if you don't use the marketing module, you can use these flags for whatever you want. All right, contacts. All right, the last one is probably the, the biggest one for us, and that was, uh, and, and hopefully for you, if you're able to get this data to us, but your CRM in a couple of weeks will be all set up to receive those new files and display them for you. So one of them was the account product prices. So I'm gonna just do a quick global search and find my famous Fairview Manufacturing. And I don't care to say that. And if I were looking at this account, if my mouse works, if I click it, 
if I were looking at this account and we did have that data integration with your back office that was sending over the customer prices each night, you all know the power of this navigation bar and specifically this last little arrow, right? If I'm looking at Fairview Manufacturing, this arrow shows me all the different data points or related records in CRM that are tied to Fairview Manufacturing. Well, in a couple of weeks, you're gonna see a new option called Account Product Prices. And if you click that, I, I assume most of you go in here probably to look at order history. Well, now, if you go in there and, and you're sending us your account product prices, when you click that, you get the list that says, these, these are all the products that the customer is set up under in your accounting system. So the product name, the product ID, how you sell it. And then ultimately, it's what, what price are they set at? And you can tell we just dumped in some data here. Um, those prices probably don't make sense, but you get it, right? The accounts, product prices right at your fingertips. And optionally, we threw a few more columns on here. You don't have to use them, but if you actually had like a price effective date, you could send us a date. If there was a rebate involved and you wanted to send that, you could. If there was a rebate effective date, if there was any little comment that your accounting system had about this product for this account, if you send that in that file every night, it will show up on the screen. The main, the main directive here was really product and price, product and price. That's really what we were looking for, but we, we just threw a few optional things in there, you know, just in case somebody wanted to send, send more stuff. All right, so cool. Hopefully you are excited about that. And if you have to reach out to your IT department or, who, or whoever was involved with the original setup of, of pulling over the data, um, they have programs already built to, um, for accounts and order history and whatnot. So for them to build this one, hopefully isn't a lot of work and you don't even need our help on this. Of course, we'd be glad to you know, answer any questions, but I'll show you the, the documentation that your, your IT team will need. And they use that for the, the initial load. So it should be pretty, pretty straightforward to them. But again, we're always here for questions. All right. Um, the other thing was the product price, uh, the product balance file. So I'm going to go into sales again, and a lot of you probably don't do this, but in the sales area, you can go into products, and it's ultimately just a list of all the products you sell. So I probably don't have a lot of reasons to go in here, but I could do a search for, uh, oh, I'll look for some spindle oil. See what I find. Okay, so I'm just going to grab any old product here. Again, it's just a screen with product information. The fact that this is in my industrial product segment and my product category is other. And there's a few other things on here that may be of interest. You know, if you had price lists set up for this, this would show all your pricing levels and how much each price was for, for this product. But the thing that we added, again, up in related records, there's a new one in a couple of weeks. When you click this, I can go to product balances. And what this will show me is for this specific product, how, it doesn't matter how many locations you have, but if, if you have one, if you have 30, it doesn't matter. There's going to be one line here for every location that you have and showing you how much of this product is on hand, on order from supplier, how much does the customer have on order, how much does the customer, do customers have on back order, how much is committed, which is probably a calculated field, and then how much is available. These, what are these? These six numbers are are completely just numbers. We don't, on the CRM side, don't do any manipulation. Um, these are just things that a lot of accounting systems take to keep track of. But if yours doesn't, I mean, if yours doesn't keep track of any of this, right, then don't worry about this file. But if maybe the only thing you have is what's on hand, well, just send that and these can all be zeros, right? You don't have to use these. They're just six fields of data tied to a product and a location. So, if you have 10 locations and each of them carry this product, there would be 10 rows here. If maybe only three of your locations have this product, there might only be three locations listed. But you basically send us the file and we kind of pretty it up and, and plop it on the screen for you. So from a user perspective, those are all the cool things that you're going to notice in this release. I just want to take just a couple seconds here, maybe a couple of minutes to just show you that, that document 900 I was talking about. So I like to talk in terms of a spreadsheet, but 
but your your IT department is going to end up building a what's called a CSV file, which is very similar to a spreadsheet. It's just uh, comma separated. It just it's the way we process things. So on that product balance file, they're just going to build a little file that looks just like this. What's the product ID? What's the location? And then those six numbers and whatever ones they fill in, you know, that's what will show up over on the CRM side. And then kind of the same concept over on the account product prices. If they build a file like this, what's the account number, what's the product, what's the price, and then remember those other dates and rebate amounts, so whatever they fill in here will show up in CRM. So that's kind of the way to look at it from a spreadsheet perspective, and, and way over the very first tab on this spreadsheet shows all the rules. This, this gets just a teeny bit technical. I mean, it's not too bad, but it just really explains um, really how the file has to look. So the name of the file is productbalances.csv. And these are the, the columns you have to send us. And these two fields are required. And the fact that the product ID has to be valid and the location is really just a text field, you know, fill in whatever you want, but, but uh, it can't be blank. So these are just the rules for the file, I mean, that they have to build. And, you know, the fact that these are all numbers and they're, they're whole numbers, we, we're not keeping track of like, you know, 100.64 gallons. Um, we, we just went with whole numbers here. And then there's a whole another section for the, the product account product prices, just the same thing. So all of this documentation means something to the folks who built the account file and the product file. That's all right, the same, same, uh, same spreadsheet. That's all in here. So if they get their hands on this and you can convince them to build these files and just include them in the nightly load when they send files to uh, our FTP site. We'll process them and they'll show up in CRM. So that's it for me. You guys probably didn't even realize that we've got uh, Matthew and Chad in the background here. So before I cut loose, um, Matthew, did anybody happen to sneak a question in while I was going? I, I know uh, that really wasn't publicized, but I know sometimes with GoToMeeting, people put stuff in the question area. I, I didn't see anything posted, Steve. All right, perfect. Steve. All right, well then, yeah, go ahead. There is actually a couple questions there. Sorry. Oh, okay, go ahead, Chad. There, there is one that, uh, can you add a customer's logo on the quote section? Um, We would have to just work with you individually on the quote template to see if there's a way we could get that, not only in there, but then how would it look? So i uh, I guess the answer to that, whoever asked, if they're still on the call, I would say just just uh, reach out to our support desk, and they'll be able to see if that's possible. Okay. Uh, then also, will the new 900 records be optional? Yes, these two files are completely optional. If you don't do anything, the system is still going to work. The only thing that you'll notice is when you're when you're in CRM and you're looking, let's say, back at this product, you just would never go here and, let's say, hit this button. Because if you did, this would just be blank because you're not sending anything. So absolutely, that whole, those two new files are completely optional. You don't have to do anything. Um, but we've got a fair amount of customers who are asking for that. So I'm sure they're going to be, they're probably going to start the project right now so they can start, the files will be maybe close to being ready by the time this release is available. Okay, and then finally, Steve, how does uh, their IT department get the 900 integration file or instruction sheet? Oh, good question. Um, so in CRM, if, you, if those of you are familiar with the workplace area, there's a whole area for documents. I know a lot of people look at workplace for dashboards and reports, but there's all these documents in CRM. And at the very second from the bottom is, is document 900. And that, if you click on this link, that just opens up that spreadsheet. And there you have it. All right. That takes care of all of them, Steve. Okay. Well, hey, thanks, everybody. Um, man, we took the full half hour. I didn't think it was going to take that long. So thanks so much for your time. I hope uh, you take advantage of all this cool stuff come August 14th. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now.